Barbara and Mercy are not only good friends, they are great traveling companions. In May this year, the pair went on a three weeks tour of five European cities and are encouraging others to do the same. I think for me, I really enjoyed um, especially trying different things like the food and just being with people who speak different languages and um, yeah, all of that is like, you know, it just goes to show the richness of the world, the, the world that we live in and yeah, it, that for me was what I took back. It, it's just enriching and it just changes your life and I really want to encourage like PNG, PNG women, PNG girls, um, those in high school now, you know, it's something you need to think about now so you can work towards it. Um, I mean, I wanted to see the Colosseum since I knew about it in year five I, in a geography, social science class, and I got to see the Colosseum. While some people would book their travel through travel agencies, these two research their destinations and depending on a network of friends and colleagues, plan their trip of Europe by themselves. We went from Germany, then to Spain. Spain, we went to France, then we went to Italy, Italy to Switzerland, then Switzerland to Germany. So in each country we stayed about a maximum of three to four days. So we could have experience of some of the major cities. So we stayed in major cities within the countries that we went to. So once we decided what countries we wanted to go to, we just saw um, how much will it cost. So we planned, um, you know, around that. So then we decided, okay, how much do we need to put aside each, you know, and how long will it take us to reach that? So when we looked at, like, um, how we were going to do it, we saw that it's going to take at least a year um, for us to save up that amount of money to go. And then we decided, okay, we can't do, like, stay in hotels and we can't stay in, you know, these um, luxury places. Ah, it's too much. It costs too much. It's out of our budget. So we decided what options do we have. This is not the first time the pair have traveled outside of Papua New Guinea. It started in 2013 when they were part of a group of friends who drove from one end of New Zealand to the other. We had so much fun on the road trip. There were seven of us from PNG who went. So we drove from um, Auckland to Wellington and back to Auckland and then we came back through Australia to Papua New Guinea. Then in 2015, they traveled through the United States. So in 2015, at Christmas, we went for three weeks and we did about, I don't know, seven states in the U.S. Um, from the West Coast to the East Coast. But this Europe trip was different. It was only the two of them. So how did they do it? Before, when we traveled to the U.S. in the past, we stayed in um, Airbnbs. So Airbnbs, are, it's short for air bed and breakfast. So you stay with people. So people, it's a registered thing on the internet. Um, it's accommodation and people put up like a room of their house. So they actually go through a proper, proper, um, um, what do you call it, screening process and people um, pay to be on that um, website. So then we went through and we decided, okay, um, where, which, which cities are we going to and what's the best um, place where we can save money and be able to move easily? What are the transport um, options? So that's one of the ways we um, did it. And Airbnb, like the accommodation per night, can be as low as $20. Mm -hmm. $20 to $50 to $70, it really depends. Mm -hmm. And whether it's close to the major cities or not. So we decided if we wanted to pay a little bit more in transport, then we could stay outside and, you know, go in. But if we really wanted to just be in the city, then we'll, um, you know, pay that extra just to be in the city so we can easily move around to see most of the sites. Um, we were fortunate that we had friends in Germany and we had friends in Paris. So we were able to um, stay in two countries without any um, accommodation costs. So that's one way we did it. It's always good to you know network and make friends and know people who live in there. So for me, um, I work with the U.S. Embassy and some of my colleagues who now live in Paris, you know, offered that we could stay with them. Um, in Germany, we stayed with some of Messi's um, friends from church, um, the German missionaries. And these two dispel the notion that only filthy rich Papua New Guineans can see the world. Their trip cost them 12,000 kina each. Um, and even before, um, what, we, what we did is we paid for everything here. So they sent us all our itinerary, all our tickets, so we had all those things. We didn't go there and try to look for accommodation. Um, so that was, that was the best part about it, they could do that. Um, and then we actually um, traveled via train most of um, most of Europe with it is like with bigger expenses like the tickets and the Eurail passes 
which is the train ticket, we, we paid in advance. And then other things like accommodation, we paid as we went in the, in the leading up to the six months before we left. So we made sure that um, we had a target month for when we should pay for all our accommodation. We had a target month for when we should pay for um, our bus ticket. So and they hope that their story will encourage more Papua New Guineans to see the world. To life and I think people need to get out of the mindset that it can't be done because it can be done mm. and you don't have to be you know filthy rich to do it you know you just have to want to do it. It's not everybody's cup of tea but for those who would love to my encouragement is just go for it don't limit yourself there's information out there and Barbara and I are happy to help anyone who wants to travel and just you know the internet and the and um, the, the social media and you know there's all this information that that you can um, explore to help you plan to go. So yeah, my encouragement is just go, go see the world, it'll change your life. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News.